welcome to Catalan News. It's only two days until the independence referendum and today the Catalan government unveiled the ballot boxes to be used for the vote. It was one of the more well-kept secrets of the last few months and it's finally been made public. The ballot boxes are plastic and were manufactured by a Chinese company. As Catalonia prepares to vote, Spain continues its preparations to stop it and today has asked to restrict airspace above Barcelona on Sunday. Here at Catalan News, we have all the details. Let's start. 5.3 million Catalans are eligible to vote on Sunday's independence referendum. There will be more than 2,300 polling stations across the country with around 6,000 ballot boxes. After weeks of unsuccessful police operations to find them, today the Catalan government revealed a model ballot box and the expectation is growing as to where the rest are kept and whether on Sunday all polling stations will be able to open. Citizens will vote on Sunday, even if the Spanish police physically seal off polling stations. This is what the Catalan government made clear today. Three ministers gave a news conference with details on the logistics of Sunday's referendum. However, not all the details were unveiled. For instance, the ministers did not disclose how people will vote if the polling stations cannot open. Hi ha alternativa. Si algú tanca un col·legi, hi ha alternativa perquè els ciutadans votin. Encara que s'enduguin una urna o 100 o 200 urnes, no pateixi que hi ha moltes maneres de votar. The cabinet spokesman said that the count will be verified by credible people. That is despite Spain's constitutional court forcing the electoral board members to cease their activity. Yet he did not reveal any names in order to avoid more attacks from the Spanish state. No li farem públic els noms avui, ara en aquesta hora, per evitar, com ha passat amb moltes altres persones al llarg d'aquest procés, que siguin víctimes de la repressió de l'Estat. He also gave some relevant figures on the logistics. For instance, more than 5.3 million citizens can vote. Almost 6,300 ballot boxes will be distributed to 2,315 polling stations throughout Catalonia, and more than 7,000 people will supervise the vote. The government also showed a model of the ballot box to be used on Sunday. The whereabouts of the ballot boxes is still one of the best-kept secrets in Catalonia. The Spanish police has so far not managed to seize any. What is also a mystery is to what extent the Spanish police will enforce court orders and prevent the vote from taking place. The cabinet in Madrid said that whatever takes place on Sunday cannot be considered a referendum. Yo estoy completamente seguro que van a cumplir con la ley y que van a cumplir sobre todo el mandato del juez, porque los mozos están sometidos a la ley. Catalan police, the Mossos Esquadra, have been ordered to seal off all polling stations in Catalonia, but without violence. And citizens are starting to organize in order to peacefully impede them. That's why some of them are staying at schools and other buildings which are going to be used as polling stations to make sure they can be opened on Sunday. Meanwhile, Catalan ministers have taken direct control of the management of the buildings in order to take responsibility in case Spain tries to prosecute heads of schools or health centres that will be used as polling stations. Sunday is going to be, for sure, an intense day in Catalonia, whatever happens. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to go to the polling stations and demonstrations might erupt if voting is prevented by police. Catalan pro-independence leaders have always urged everyone to protest peacefully and they have been peaceful, but nonetheless, Spain has deployed thousands of police agents in Catalonia with some staying in big vessels in the port and today it has been revealed that also the sky will be restricted. No helicopters or small planes are allowed to fly over Barcelona this weekend. The Spanish government has ordered a ban on the airspace over the Catalan capital and surroundings for light aircraft 48 hours before the independence referendum is held. The move has prompted criticisms from pro-independence campaigners who suggest that the ban is an attempt to prevent aerial images of events related to the referendum, such as protests or demonstrations. The Spanish government rejects the accusation, arguing that airspace is also restricted during other important events, such as the Catalan National Day demonstrations. However, media helicopters and drones were allowed to fly over Barcelona during the last rally on September the 11th. The airspace restriction comes amid an intensified police presence in Catalonia. Up to 10,000 Spanish officers have been deployed to the area, with some staying in large vessels in the port of Barcelona. In the past few weeks, Spain's Guardia Civil officers have confiscated more than 12 million ballot papers and millions of campaign posters and arrested 15 people, including high-ranking Catalan government officials. These measures cause some concern internationally, with even UN experts urging restraint from Spain. An international delegation of parliamentarians from 16 different European countries and Israel have arrived in Catalonia to observe in person the independence referendum. The politicians from the European Parliament 
but also from national parliaments such as Denmark and the UK have met with Catalan President Carles Puigdemont, among other ministers. Their agenda also includes meetings with anti-independence campaigners and political parties. We can speak now with the Secretary General of the Diplocat, the Public Diplomacy Council of Catalonia, which has organised a visit for these politicians. Mr. Albert Royo, thank you very much for joining us. First of all, how do you assess so far the reaction of the European institutions to the Catalan referendum? Well, I can understand that there is no reaction coming from the international community as long as there is no clear mandate for independence. So we are right now in the phase of, let's say, uh, knowledge to explain what is happening here in Catalonia and we expect to be in the next phase, uh, next Monday, which is the phase of uh, searching recognition. So in this sense, I can understand that they say this is an internal issue, but I cannot accept that they say that it's an internal issue when the Spanish government is crossing red lines when it comes to respect for human rights or for civic rights. It's then when we would expect the European Commission as uh, the institution which is responsible for uh, well, uh, obliging member states to respect the treaties, uh, the Commission should, should react in that situation. And we are seeing that they are not doing their duty and in this sense they are not respecting the, tra the treaties uh, themselves. We've been seeing images of some of the foreign politicians that are here to observe the referendum. Who are they and why have you organised this trip? Well, there is uh, an international parliamentary delegation which is composed of some 35 members of European parliaments and members of the European Parliament as well. And they are here to follow the situation closely. They are here to follow the day of the referendum and the outcome. Uh, they are members of the main political families uh, in Europe. This is the EPP, Social Democrats, Greens and Left and they come from a diverse uh, scope of member states. And do you think that after the referendum, European countries will feel obliged to react to what's actually going on? Well, it will depend on the outcome of the referendum, how the referendum has been held and what's the, the outcome of this referendum. So we expect that if there is a high turnout and a clear yes victory, then uh, we understand that the government of Catalonia will implement that mandate and it's then where we start, we begin with the new phase which is to look for recognition. Thank you very much, Albert Royo. Most welcome. Let's continue now with the international reaction to what's going on in Catalonia because today EU leaders were meeting in Estonia without Rajoy who did not attend in order to supervise events that are happening in Catalonia. And although the referendum was not on the official agenda, some leaders did comment about it as did a Finnish MP who disclosed a very peculiar exchange of emails with the Spanish ambassador of this Nordic country. A Finnish MP today disclosed the threats he received from the Spanish ambassador to Finland. In the past few days, he has shown support for the Catalan referendum on social media and the diplomat sent him an email on Friday requesting the meeting. The MP suggested meeting next week after the vote and asked him to respect human rights and democracy in Catalonia. If not, he warned, I will make sure that you are held responsible, he said. The diplomat's response came as a surprise. This morning I received a reply which was uh, totally uh, out of the order and, and, and out of the question where the Spanish ambassador was threatening Finland about that if we have any security issues, we should turn to Catalonia and, and the Spain uh, uh, will not help us. Meanwhile, European leaders met in Tallinn in Estonia to discuss the digital future of the Union but they ended up talking about the political situation in Catalonia after a range of questions from journalists. Il faut toujours du dialogue et de la sérénité dans la vie politique de nos pays, mais j'ai confiance dans la détermination de Mariano Rajoy pour défendre les intérêts de toute l'Espagne et Como presidente del Parlamento, creo que después el lunes es importante dialogar. No se puede solamente resolver con policía y con el respeto de la ley. Es importante respetar la ley, pero en el marco del respeto de la ley es importante un diálogo. Among the heads of government and state that met in Estonia, one was missing, the Spanish president Mariano Rajoy, who did not attend the summit in order to be in Spain during the weekend of the referendum. And with this, we finish today's show. 
We'll be back on Sunday on the day of the referendum with two special editions of Catalan News. In the meantime, we leave you with some images of farmers from all around Catalonia, which today took to the streets to defend the referendum. Thank you for watching and see you on October 1st.